Would you have expected this man with nearly 800,000 subscribers to be going to prison for 500 years? And no, that's not an exaggeration. But wait, would you have expected this other YouTuber to be a criminal? What about this one? Or this one? Or this one? Today, we will be talking about YouTubers who became horrible criminals. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for 200 thousand subscribers this is insane you guys are literally the reason i'm so happy in life right now and just thank you guys so much for everything seriously i i appreciate every single person that watches my videos that has notifications turned on that comments first yeah i notice you guys that comment first <laughs> all the people that follow me over on instagram seriously you guys are the best and thank you for everything and all the fan art and everything literally everything Thank you guys so much. The other thing you guys may have noticed is that uh, my outfit's a little bit different. This is our first video of October. Every video in October, I'm gonna be wearing a different costume. So uh, let's check out the outfit. It's me. It's me, Tub. I broke out of prison. Broke out of prison. My girlfriend broke up with me, so I had to break out of prison too. Nah, shut up, bro. Shut up. All right, let's get started with the video. The Stokes Twins, a channel with 8.7 million subscribers owned by Alan Stokes and Alex Stokes. They began uploading in 2017 and their content consisted of skits, Q&As, and showing off their bodies. Yup. Anyway, in 2019, they went through a prank phase and fast forward to now in 2021, it seems they make Mr. Beast type challenge videos and I'm not gonna lie, they get an amazing amount of views. But let's get back to their prank era, specifically in October of 2019. One of those pranks was called the quote unquote bank robbery gone wrong prank, where both of the twins pretend to rob banks and run off with bags of money and ski masks. At one point in the video, they order an Uber, right? And how do you expect the Uber driver to react? Uber for Alan? Yes. What is it? Uh, our, our getaway driver just bailed on us. So, uh. Is it, uh, what is it? What is this? What is this? Oh, we're going to like a costume, costume party. Okay, can I just take this away? Just get out of my coffee. Actually? Yeah. Wait. No, we're gonna get caught. Okay. No, we can't do. Ah. Oh. This dude was scared to death and told him to get out of his car. Later in the video, we find out that the Uber driver actually had guns drawn at him by police because they thought he was a legitimate getaway driver. They later released him because, well, no shit, he was innocent. Remember when YouTubers would make their videos 10 minutes just to put extra ads in their videos? Well, you know, YouTube reduced that to eight minutes now, but back in the day, yeah, it was 10 minutes, and I'm sure we all remember that. Anyway, in order to stretch their video to 10 minutes, these idiots included a clip of the police getting frustrated with them for thinking this was funny. Why would, okay. But then like, I guess the ski mask is kind of like, major. Dude, think about what's going on nowadays. Mm -hmm. Think about it, man. You've got to be smart than that, man. You're lucky you didn't get any guns drawn at you. You're absolutely lucky you didn't get any guns drawn at you. Yeah, so after this prank was uploaded, they faced no consequences until August of 2020, almost an entire year later. The brothers were each charged with one felony count of false imprisonment affected by violence, menace, fraud, or deceit, as well as one misdemeanor count of falsely reporting an emergency, according to the Orange County District Attorney's Office. Here's another fun fact. So you know when the police called them out for being idiots at the end of their video? Well, that was just a warning. They, they just got a warning. It was not like they did not get a charge or anything. But these idiots <laughs> later went to a real bank and filmed the prank again after the warning. I mean, they were lucky they weren't arrested first go, but they got a chance and they fucked it up again. Also, this is their horrible reaction to uh, their Uber driver almost being killed. No, 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 so like, so like there was an Uber. I caught an Uber driver, right, and we both got in the car. And then the, the like people like saw us get in the car with like the ski mask and everything on, and then we the Uber driver kicked us out of the car. One minute later, there were like ten cop cars that pulled out like guns on him. Like they were like they rifles. They thought he was a getaway driver, so he got like fifteen guns. Like put on. He's like, I'm not even a part of this. So like, yeah, poor guy. So. So now the most recent part of the story is from April of this year. The Stokes twins plead guilty to the crimes committed in the video. A judge in California sentenced the twins to community service and a year's probation for misdemeanor. They could have faced up to five years in prison for the pranks. So they're not going to prison. They're just doing a little community service. And uh, you know, if it were up to me, man, uh, you kind of messed up when you did it again. All right, you know what? Let's move on to the next person. Omi in a Hellcat. Okay, so judging from this dude's oldest videos, it seems he was already rich when making his first video, judging by the fat chain and cars he's showing off. That was in 2019. 
Fast forward to 2021, and he's still doing the same thing. We'll just call him a rich vlogger. Anyway, I looked up how this man was making his money, and oh boy. Apparently, this man owns many estates, including a mansion and two nightclubs. But the main way he makes his money is extremely illegal. Now, when I say illegal, what do you think of? Drugs? Firearms? If you guessed piracy, then you're right. So let's explain how this man and two of his other associates made $35 million in one year. So these guys made a quote unquote app that would illegally stream TV. These men subscribed to video services such as Verizon, Fios, DirecTV, and many more, then used a device to rip the MP4 files and simply put it on their own app, which was called Gears TV. By the way, the logo is literally the Gears of War logo. These guys had no humility when it came to ripping people off and stealing. Anyway, they charged $19 dollars a month for customers to pay on for their Android devices and that includes jailbroken Amazon Fire Sticks. And well, let's just say business was booming. All three men bought extravagant houses, vehicles, and chains until a couple of months ago when the FBI was reaching out to Omi. He even uploaded a video titled, The FBI is Back, where he says this. This was a matter for any copyright holders to come to me and say, hey, stop using it. No, the it wasn't. This was a matter of not distributing copyrighted content and having others pay you for it. You're supposed to know that. You're not supposed to wait until someone tells you to stop. This is copyright we're talking about. You guys remember when Mr. Beast hummed a song in one of his videos and the record label claimed the entire video? Copyright is a very serious thing. Now imagine if you ripped an entire service off. What did you expect would happen? He talks about his entire case within the video and someone even commented this. Bro, stop speaking about your case on YouTube. Your lawyer should have told you that. They'll use anything you say online against you. Omi could face 514 years, aka life in prison, if he is convicted of the charges. That includes conspiracy, violating the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, reproduction of protected work, access device fraud, false statements to a bank, and money laundering. Pollution Entertainment Matias Oyarzo, born September 19th, 2003, better known online as Pollution Entertainment. This boy was a former YouTuber from Chile. I feel like people might get mad at the way I pronounced it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and correct myself and say Chile. He began uploading Five Nights at Freddy's gameplay videos, skits, and other things kids do on YouTube. In one of his earlier videos titled 50 Things About Me, he talks about how he goes on gore websites and just laughs at the videos he watches. Anyway, on May 19th, 2018, Matias uploaded a video titled My Baby Kitten Jason. It's just a 5 second clip of his kitten licking his paws. A few months later in December, Matthias uploaded another video where he announces that he adopted two new kittens due to his last one dying from a quote unquote accidental cause. Except the cat didn't die from an accidental cause. Matthias got into a heated argument with someone on WhatsApp and to piss them off even more, he sent them a video of him brutally murdering his cat on video. Now, don't worry, I'm not gonna describe the specifics, nor am I gonna put any screenshots up on this video. The video ended up getting leaked and Matthias was doxxed and the video infuriated many people, not only in Chile, but around the world. Here's a video of people standing outside of his house as a result of him getting doxxed. And in that same news segment, his mother was interviewed and she explains that Matthias has a disorder, which we later found out was Asperger's, and that they're never buying any pets again, and they will try everything in their power to fix Matthias. He uploaded an apology video, but that apology is dog shit. He literally says that the cat wasn't feeling well, so he tried making him feel better by hitting his legs. This dumbass's account was taken down almost two years later in 2020. Yeah, I don't know why YouTube took so long to do that. And also, shout out to Critical. He's one of the people that really brought this story to light, and a month after Critical's video, Matthias' channel was taken down. Nazim Agdam. Nazim Agdam was a 39 year old Iranian woman who promoted veganism and a healthy lifestyle here on YouTube, though most of her content was out there to say the least. She had about 3,000 subscribers and everything seemed to be going well for the most part. Well, until YouTube demonetized her channel and her second channel. She became outraged with the fact that they were basically stealing her livelihood and complained about only making 10 cents from 300,000 views. She even spoke out about it in a video, which yeah, that isn't right. You should not be making 10 cents for every 300,000 views, but I'm sure YouTube had a reason to demonetize her channel. Anyway, this woman lived in San Diego and in a fit of rage, drove hundreds of miles to San Bruno, California to the YouTube headquarters with murder in mind. Her family had filed a missing persons report and on the morning of the shooting, police actually found her, but you know, they just informed the family, told her, Ayo, your daughter's safe, but uh, 
obviously they didn't know she was going to shoot up the YouTube headquarters. Later that day, Nazim walked into the building's patio and shot three people until turning the gun on herself. Luckily, those three people have recovered. I've never seen anyone get so mad over getting demonetized that they shoot up a place, let alone that this was a woman and not a guy. I, it's really rare to hear about women shooters. Also, in an interview the next day, her father wasn't even crying that his daughter left this earth or the fact that she tried taking people with her. He just says sorry and hands people a pre-written apology. What? The shooter's father simply saying he's sorry. I'm sorry. I can't believe it. Also handing out a statement that read, Our family is in absolute shock and can't make sense of what has happened yesterday. Not so fantastic Devin. Yes, the Colorado shooter that girls on TikTok simped for. This came to a shock to me, but this kid actually had a YouTube channel before uh, he actually did those things, and uh, he went by the name of Not So Fantastic Devin. I'm not gonna talk about the shooting, but I am gonna talk about his channel with about 200 subscribers. He only has three videos up, and they're all shitty Dead by Daylight streams. Nothing special, just gameplay with commentary. Not only did this dude have horrible morals, but he also had a horrible PC. But this comment stood out to me. It's kind of crazy to think about the fact that the people playing with him had no idea they were playing with a future school shooter. And I completely agree. I what that must be a trip. I don't even know if the people know who Devin actually ended up being but while in the comments I also came across um, a lot of his fans. Yes Fans, I'll show you guys one example because I'm not gonna fill this video up with his fans So we see this comment right here. I love you so much Devin and there's my response <laughs> I'll never understand why people praise other people like this Elliot Roger. Elliot Roger was uh, a beta male, to put it simply. He's literally been dubbed the virgin killer by a bunch of news sites. So the story goes that this man had a mental illness and shot up a college killing six and injuring 14. I mean, no shit. For someone to do what he did, you'd have to have some sort of mental illness. His childhood was normal for the most part, growing up with divorced parents like many kids nowadays. His dad even helped direct Hunger Games. Except Elliot was very socially awkward. Before the shooting, he uploaded a video titled Retribution, where he explains his reasoning for the shooting he plans on taking part in. I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me. Yeah, like I said, he's the definition of a beta male. He further explains his plans later in the video. After I've annihilated every single girl in the sorority house, I'll take to the streets of Isla Vista and slay every single person I see there. After this video was filmed, he went out and sent a 137 page document about his entire life story to certain friends and family. One of those people being his therapist. His therapist quickly called his parents and was like, yo, your kid is about to do something horrible. But by the time the parents found out, it was too late. Elliot had already stabbed three of his roommates to death too terrible for George Chen's parents to even contemplate. I just don't know why this happened to our son. It is it's crazy. This is this just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. At 9.27 p.m., the first reports of a mass shooting underway. Shots fired, shots fired. Elliot's next target was a sorority to, quote, take revenge on all the girls he believed rejected him. After no one let him in, he opened fire on three random girls walking on the block. Two of them sadly passed away. After that, he shoots into a deli filled with students. He then shot and killed one more person. Our son was the most important thing in the world to all of us. He was our only child, and uh, he was so much a part of our lives that it's hard to imagine how things are going to be like now that he's gone. Eventually, he crashed his car and then turned the gun on himself. Mr. Anime. Trey Eric Seltzer, aka Mr. Anime, joined the platform in 2006 and would upload anime review videos. The name of the channel was Lens Cat Productions, but he went by Mr. Anime. We spoke about him in the darkest YouTube iceberg, so if you watch that, you already know what's coming. As he would upload his regular videos, he would also upload videos showing off his firearms. Though no one was alarmed because he uploaded a rant where he talks about how disturbing the increase in mass shootings has become. Well, today I'm writing on something, um, a little bit right? Um, yes, I'm ranting on something a little bit anime unrelated. I'm ranting on all the shootings that have been happening. I'm a firearms owner myself, but uh, it's, uh, it is it is a little bit disturbing to know that you could be a victim in something like this at these times. All the people that were victims, you think it won't happen to me, but sometimes it does. But seriously, every day I open Yahoo, I'm like, well, time to see what, today, time to see what today's shooting is, and hey, there's another one. So, I don't know when it's going to stop. I think it's... Why? 
Why? In February of 2012, Trey said that he was going to take a two to three week break to reward himself. At the end of his break, he announced on March 13th that he had a new job in a field he found fascinating and it may prevent him from uploading videos, though he plans to upload on his blog. In the early morning of March 20th, 2012, Trey lured his mother out into the garage where he shot her in the chest at point blank range. From here, he entered the home and shot his brother in the head. His father woke up from the shots and entered the living room to investigate, only to be shot by Trey in the torso, just like he shot his mom. From here, Trey destroyed the whole house and killed the remaining pets in the house before carrying weapons and 100 rounds of ammo into Waller High School down the street with plans to commit mass murder. His original plan was to kill at least 70 students at the school's pep rally in order to become one of the biggest mass murderers in history, as revealed in his interrogation. They were the first immediate human targets in my sight. And if I was going to go out and do anything, they would have to go. He killed his family first to spare them from knowing what he was going to do next. However, Trey stood down and returned home, where he was arrested for murder. He revealed later that the event was becoming all too real, and as a result, he gave up. Trey was sentenced to life in prison. Trey had requested that his rights to parole would also be taken, believing he'd pose a danger to himself and others. On the walls in his home, he wrote several things in marker, including, Why did I do this? I love my mom, dad, and brother. I miss my brother, father, and mother. And God, please forgive me because I can't forgive myself. Alyssa Dayvault. Now, Alyssa was probably the hardest person to find information on, and I'm not talking about the crime she committed. I'm talking about her YouTube channel. There are no re-uploads. It's just the story. So I tried really hard to find re-upload something, but no, like, people don't care enough to upload re-upload videos about this person, and I see why. So, apparently this woman had a YouTube channel surrounding makeup tutorials. This woman from South Carolina is guilty of murdering her two newborn children. Yeah. In 2017, she had a baby girl, and in 2018, she had a baby boy. Both times this woman delivered her babies, she, uh... She, she threw them away in the trash outside. I forgot to mention that both times she delivered her babies, they were in her apartment. So she would throw them away in the trash can outside of the apartment. The reason she was caught was because the hospitals would keep tabs on her, you know, because she probably went in when she was, you know, getting checkups on the baby's heartbeat, stuff like that. They were, they were keeping tabs on her basically until one day she came back to the hospital and tried to uh, deliver the baby but nothing came out. It was just the umbilical cord. And she was trying to play along with this idea of like, she tried to play it off as a miscarriage, but I'm sure the hospital contacted authorities and they're like, yo, something's not right here. It doesn't say that in the article, but it says the, there were testimonials. So I'm gonna assume, I'm only assuming that those are the doctors that actually reached out to the authorities. But this woman ended up getting 40 years in prison, which I think, we, again, I think we can all agree that this person deserves life in prison. This deserves to rot in that prison cell. Yeah, I got nothing more to say about this person. All right, that was it for this video. Um, I, I usually say, if you if you like the video, then leave a like, but then I, people always say, yo, when I watch your videos, I, I get sad. It's like, bro, I talk about morbid topics. What'd you expect? You wanna come here and you wanna see me make Mr. Beast videos? Like, I'm, no. So if you think this was a quality video, make sure to leave a like, it helps the channel out. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. And also, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, make sure to do that. Also guys, this video was edited by my good friend, Charge, AKA Austin. So his link is down in the description. Let me know if you guys like the way he edited it and maybe we'll keep him as the channel editor. Also really quickly before the video ends, I just wanna say, uh, I can't wait to start releasing music, bro. I'm gonna release music like early 2022. It's gonna be hyper pop music. I've been working behind the scenes, you know, getting my vocals right, engineering, all that. So I'm really excited to start releasing a uh, hyper pop music in 2022. So I just wanna, you know, I just wanted to hype you guys up about that at the end of this video. But uh, I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time I upload.